Well, I'm a native of Montpelier, right? I was born in Montpelier, graduated from the University of Vermont with a degree in psychology. I also graduated with a commission in the United States Army Reserve. Uh, went into Peace Corps, served in Ethiopia for a bit in Korea, and uh, went out to Silicon Valley where I got a Master of Science degree in Environmental Management. I worked with hazardous materials as an industrial hygienist, safety engineer, and uh, and an environmental expert. Uh, returned to Montpelier, Vermont, uh, after my mother died and inherited uh, the family guest house, which uh, which I have been running since that time for about the last twenty five years. I worked for Senator Bill Doyle. Now, he's not a relation, but I think everybody in the county knew Senator Bill Doyle. Uh, I was uh, his chauffeur, his driver, basically. And I learned a great deal from working for the senator for 25 years. I am on the psychology board and from time to time serve as an ad hoc member on the uh, allied mental health board. So I have had some experience in the state. Uh, in Pennsylvania, I served for 10 years on the Eastern Area School Board. It's a city about the size, of, a little larger than the city of Burlington. So I've had some uh, political experience uh, in that. Uh, as I say, I answered the call to fill in for my fellow Republicans and to fill this vacancy. That's a lot to answer in a two minute period of time and I'll start out this way. There was a recent study called the PICUS study that says that the people of Vermont are spending about 400 to $500 million too much uh, already for schools. So one of the first things I would advise is start looking into some ways to economize. Vermont is the fifth highest per capita student expense. Uh, we're paying about $17,000 for students. Uh, we should be paying about $13,000 for students. So once again, I would say, start looking for some ways to economize. Uh, I did work, as I said, for about 10 years on a school board in Eastern Pennsylvania, big school board, big budget. And I uh, developed a, a suspicion of uh, teachers' unions. So I uh, think that we should be a little tougher in our negotiation on some of the stuff that we uh, work with teachers' unions on. Now, I'm not against teachers being fairly paid and fairly treated. I think we need to be competitive. I think we need to be fair. And I think our school system ought to be a good company to work for. But I do believe that the first place we should look for some money is within the monies that we are already spending. Well, I think one of the first things that we should do to uh, make uh, housing more available is to uh, look for some expensive uh, regulations to uh, get out of the way. You know, uh, we have watched Act 250 for about 60, 70 years now. Act 250 was designed in a time when the Vermont economy was based very largely on family-owned farms. And nowadays, a family-owned farm is actually a pretty rare thing. Uh, Act 250 actually made it fairly difficult uh, and complicated and expensive to build anything in Vermont. So I think we ought to go and uh, give uh, Act 250 uh, uh, an overdue uh, makeover. Uh, we're not the same Vermont we were when that act was written. You know, there are people that actually make an awful lot of money making, building, selling real estate. And uh, one of the reasons that they haven't been able to thrive in Vermont is because uh, 
Our permitting process is long, complicated, unpredictable, and uh, and we've got a lot of add-ons. For a while here in Montpelier, you could not build any new housing without having a uh, installed uh, fire suppression system, adding another twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars onto the initial cost of building a house, which uh, which hadn't been permitted anyway. We uh, we lost an opportunity to build a parking garage here in Montpelier because three people uninvolved, they had no money, no skin in the game, uh, used Act 250 to uh, delay building that parking garage. And the people that were going to build it just decided they didn't have time to do business with us. Well, for one thing, I think uh, when you finally run out of money uh you use what you have rather than what you wish you had one thing that as a result of the covid epi epi epidemic and uh, a number of other things uh i suppose we have created a lot of empty heated uh plumb the electrical uh, space uh, here in Vermont, uh, empty offices, the state has quite a few, empty colleges, the students aren't here anymore. We've got uh, a lot of space that we could be putting people in. It's a matter of finding a way to coordinate and use space that we already have. And once again, if there is a way that a developer of some sort can actually make uh, some money doing this, it will happen pretty fast. Well, for one thing, we're talking about predicting the weather. That never has been a exact science. I do believe that the climate is changing. I think the unpredictable part is knowing exactly how that's going to affect things. Now, it's always been a federal responsibility to uh, build the interstate highway system and maintain that. Uh, so we're going to have to rely on the federal government as we always have. Uh, on a local uh, on a local basis, Vermont has uh, got a, quite a network of trails and roads and dirt roads, and we've always been able to afford to maintain those ourselves. Uh, it's it's a matter of civil engineering, and uh, I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure that uh, I can give you an answer to how we're going to do that in two minutes. You know, we don't even know what we're going to be driving uh, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Okay, uh, normally. That's not a hot button issue or a, a, a first a first burner issue for me. Mm -hmm. I suppose that might have something to do with the fact that I'm a a male and a lot less directly interested in it than a than a female might be. My perspective on this is that I might have some personal opinions uh, on the matter, but uh, this is the sort of matter that. Uh, I need not to look at my personal opinions. I need to look at the uh, representing my constituency, what I believe that a majority of people who uh, would be electing me would actually want. Uh, I believe in, I believe that would include the formula safe, legal, and rare. And I believe that uh, rape, incest, and the mother's health are key considerations. I also believe that uh, this is a matter that hasn't been finally, definitively settled by the United States. And therefore, this one still belongs to the states and to the localities, the people haven't finally decided this issue. I think that one of the things I would like to see is I would like to see Vermont become an attractive place 
for young people to move. Presently, it is not. There is no place to live when you get here. There are people that are offering jobs that are looking for help, but there's no housing for these people. Uh, we need to uh, we need to increase our entrepreneurial spirit. We need to make it easier to build things, easier to do things, uh, easier to uh, make money and get things done. And one of the quickest ways, how do you do that? How do you do that? One of the quickest ways to do that is to lower the price of energy. If you do that, all of the prices of everything, goods and services, will also begin to fall as surpluses are created. Uh, that's just a principle of supply-side economics that I've always believed uh, works best. A rising tide lifts all boats. Lower the price of gas.